Hello everyone, D. Alfred Ostrowski here, and in this recording, I'm going to be giving a tutorial from ground zero of constructing a Dockerized Golang web application and deploying it as an AWS Elastic Beanstalk platform as a service application. So I'm going to do everything on the AWS platform, including the construction of my Golang web server and the dockerization of that. So to start off, I'm going to create an EC2 instance, and that's where I'm going to do all the work to prepare my application before it's being deployed to Elastic Beanstalk. So I'm, I'm at the EC2 console. The only thing I'm assuming at this point is that you have an Amazon account and hopefully some basic familiarity of how to navigate with the Amazon interface. So here I'm at EC2. If you don't know how to get there, you can easily search for EC2 and select that. And it's going to take you right back to exactly where I am. And I clicked on instances. That's going to give me my associated instances here. So I'm going to launch an instance. I don't need a high-end instance to do this job. I'm going to get a real low-end T2 micro pre-tier eligible instance. You use Ubuntu as usual, just due to the popularity of it. And I'm going to, again, choosing T2. I'm also assuming that you generated a PPK key, and you can go through the Amazon instructions if you haven't. I've already created one, so I'm going to select a pre-existing key and everything else I'm going to default and launch that instance and give it about a minute or so. And while that's coming up, I'm going to initiate a client to my EC2 instance. I'm going to use the PuTTY client to accomplish that. That's free online if you don't have it. So I just run it as an executable on my local Windows box. So I brought that up here. At this point, I should have an IP, which I do for my EC2 instance. So I'm going to grab that and put that into my PuTTY host. And I'm going to grab my key that I associated with the cluster. And I'm going to establish 30 seconds between the keep alive for the session. And I'm going to bump up my font to make it a little bit easier to read. So this should bring up my putty session. This looks OK. I didn't set up a password, just defaulted everything. So just you want to takes me in. And I'm good to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is just create a test directory. And this is where I'm going to keep everything I'm on home. You want to I'm going to CD to that test. This is where I'm going to do all my work. Now. I'm using Docker, okay? So Docker is gonna load in my Golang. Otherwise I'd have to load it in a Golang environment. And again, I'm starting everything completely from scratch here. So you can follow along and do exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna provide my files so you can exactly duplicate to the letter what I'm doing here to run through this tutorial. So I'm gonna install Docker here. That's sudo snap install Docker. I buffered off screen, so I do sudo stap install docker. It's the only utility I'm going to install here, except for the uh, a zip utility I'm going to do in a few, few minutes from now. So this is starting up. It's going to take, well, less than a minute. OK, it's done already. So I'm going to load up my Go web server. I'm going to call it main.go. And I have my code here. I'm just going to cut, paste, pull that in. Just your bare minimum web server. I bring in package main and do import of a few libraries, formatting NetHTTP to give my, me the ability to run a web server and a time library that's going to allow me to display the time on a function called that web server. I have a main function here a handler that's going to relate it to the index function that's just below that. Print out a message to the screen now serving local host. So I'm going to change that to 8080 as opposed to uh, 8000. And change it here as well. 
to be consistent. My listeners at 8080 and then is going to respond with a message and an invocation to the time of the library. So that's good to go. And I could test at this point, but I don't have Golang installed, so I can't run it as a Golang app. But I'm going to jump ahead. I'm going to just run it as a container and test it locally before we deploy it to Elastic Beanstalk. To do that, I have to do one more thing. I have to create a Docker file. I'm not going to go through all the details of the activity of Dockerizing a file. Let me make a pass through some of the basics here. I'm pulling in Golang 114. I'm going to associate a label, establish a working directory, do a copy into that directory, initiate a build, expose it to port 80, and define an entry point. At this point, I'm going to build. I have the, doc, the Docker utility, and I have my two files that are necessary. I can do a sudo docker build. Sudo is giving me admin. And I'm going to do a Docker build, give it an associated label for the existing directory. And I make a note, I'm doing this right in that new test directory that I created under the home Ubuntu. This should complete in less than a minute. And then I'm going to test it. And I'm going to call it from my EC2 instance to make sure my Docker file is good to go. This is going to be the file that I'm going to upload through the GUI interface to the Elastic Beanstalk. I'm going to zip it up and I'm going to download it locally and then through the graphical interface, upload it. So I have a successful build on that. Now I can run that Docker file and let's test this web application, make sure that we don't have anything, any mistakes here. So it looked like it ran appropriately. So this is my instance here. Let me go into, I want to double check security and make sure I can actually access that instance. If I go into my security group, I can edit my inbound roles. And you see right now it's only set up for a secure shell. So I'm going to just open it up may not be the best practice for a commercial server in all cases, but we just want to get this up and running. So I'm going to save these rules. This is going to allow me to access. If you get a 404 error, then it's probably due to the fact that you forgot to set up the security rule for this. So now I can go back to my instances and I'm going to grab that DNS and let's test that Docker file. Click back into details. That gives me my public DNS. I'm just going to click over to the left of that, copy that. And I'm going to bring in a, a new tab. And let's not forget that we're running 8080. Whoops. Let's try it out. Success. So it's printing out my message. It's giving me a timestamp. Let's run it again to make sure that it's doing what it should be doing, right? And you can see the time updating here. So it's actively managing a request from this client. So I've successfully built my Docker file. Let's start getting it set up with the Elastic Beanstalk. So I'm going to go back to AWS. And before I get into the Elastic Beanstalk console, I've had problems with the deployment. So I'm going to need to set up an IAM role specifically with some of the default AWS Elastic Beanstalk privileges. And I'm going to accomplish this by going into IAM and click into that. This will take me to the identity, identity and access management console. I'm going to click to the left here under roles. I'm going to create a brand new role. We'll click on create role. And I'm going to leave AWS service. And I'm going to define it as an EC2 
use case. I'm going to click next and attach some policies associated with that role. And to do that, I'm going to specify with, I have over 800 policies here, so I need to search for them. Elastic, in stock, and I'm just going to wildcard it from here. So I'm going to pick three policies, Beanstalk web tier, worker tier, and multi-container Docker. And they're all three associated here on that search. They all come up. So I'm not going to create a policy. I'm searching for policy. So I don't do a create at this point, even if you're prompted to. I'm going to do a next. I'm going to give it a role name. I'm going to call this Al Golang. And I'm going to call it twenty five L Golang twenty five for my role. And I see my permissions that I've added. They should show up here in the step two for the verification. Well, let's create that role. So it's going to come as a blue, and then it's going to turn green works appropriate, which it just did. Very good. Now we can go into Elastic Beanstalk. So you can search for it. And go to the Elastic Beanstalk console. I have an environment that comes up for some prior efforts. I'm just gonna click on Elastic Beanstalk and that's gonna give me the introductory screen here. I'm gonna to click to the right on the yellow button to create that application. So I'm gonna give it an application name. I'll call it Al Golang 25. And it's gonna show up as the same as the environment name. I'm going to maintain it as a managed platform. And here I'm going to choose Docker because I have a Dockerized application. And it defaults everything here. And now I'm going to specify to upload my code. Well, I'm on an EC2 instance to make this, uh, uh, to be able to access that. Let me go back and bring in, bring another screen here and, uh, Go to EC2. And I'm going to grab my IP and I'm going to pull it down locally so I can upload it and not worry about uploading it directly from a Unix client. Okay, so this is just going to uh, give me somewhat a quick and dirty way. And I'm gonna use a FTP utility to download it. So here I click into Site Manager and I'm using FileZilla for this, which is just an open source FTP package. It gives me connectivity between my local machine, which I'm running as a Windows 10 box and the EC2 instance where I built up my entire Docker environment. So that I pull it in, make sure I pulled in the right one. I'm going to connect to that. So again, on the left-hand side, after it does the connection, left-hand side is Windows. The right-hand side is my Unix test directory. And I want to pull my zip utility. And I have to, first I have to zip that up. So that's one thing I have to do. Do sudo install zip. Give that a few seconds to install. And I'm going to, and again, I'm in my directory with the Docker file main go, and I'm just going to do zip files.zip. And 
and pull those files in there. So this should show up. If I refresh this, shows up here and I'll just pull it into my local downloads folder. And you can see it happening right here. I hit, hit, hit did that prior with a earlier instance. So I'm just gonna overwrite that file. So now I can go back to my Elastic Beanstalk. And again, I have tested my Dockerized Golang web app, ran it on my EC2 instance as a Dockerized file. And then I downloaded it locally. So now when I'm going through the application code, I'm going to choose local file here. And now I don't have to worry about pulling it from an EC2 instance. I can just pull it directly from the downloads folder of my local machine. I did everything. And again, I did all the staging on EC2. So you could follow my instructions perfectly if you're using the same exact instances and we have a level playing field here. So this is checked as green and it's good to go. So I can do a next and I'm gonna do version 25, just give it a version label complained about. Service access. So this is the, the, the last thing I really need to specify. I'm gonna use existing service role. I'm gonna specify this is provided, this service role, Elastic Beanstalk. However, I want to make a point that I got errors with environment must have instant profile associated with it in the deployment. So that's why I went through and did the um, specification of the IAM role specifically to support this. So I, I label it as OL Golang 25. And now I'm going to specify here under EC2 instance role is where I put in the role I created with under the IAM utility. So now I can click next. Everything else I'm gonna default on this. Virtual private cloud, instant settings, we have the database tags. Just wanna do the hello equivalent for Elastic Beanstalk. You can do more extensive configurations once you're up and running. Again, more defaults here. So we'll go down here and click next. Then I have more configurations. I default through all this as well. Final review and submission. Scroll all the way down and I'm gonna click submit. There you go. So it's launching my environment. It's going to take a couple of minutes and we can monitor the events. It's not going to take that long. It took an inordinate amount of time. I shut down the video, but it's going to take approximately about two minutes. And again, the issues with IAM roles, I specify to avoid errors. If you have errors in the events, if you skip that, you may experience similar errors with failing to launch the environment in the appropriate fashion. In comparison to other tutorials, I had to go through that to avoid the errors that I was experiencing with doing this build. Here, everything is blue. It looks like it's working appropriately. So I need the health to turn green and give me the OK check. And it's also gonna provide me an updated domain that I can run and be able to specify my Dockerized application. In this case, formally deployed platform as a service, Elastic Beanstalk. I'm getting closer. It's looking very good here. I do have a domain now, it's still pending. Could almost try it, but let's let it formally complete here. This will actually be launching an EC2 instance. 
and we can go back to the EC2 console and see that new instance that's being managed. And you're going to want to be careful, right? When this is up and running, you will be charged for this. So as soon as we demonstrate this, provide everything works appropriately, we're going to go back and make sure we delete our deployed application and the environment will also be removed by virtue of doing that as well as the termination of those instances because anytime you leave anything up and running whether it is against your free account you'll be burning up your free privileges and eventually running some type of tab so you don't want to be doing this especially since this is not going to exist as a formalized deployed application but rather just a simple test hello world style deployment so here i have okay everything looks good i got the green successfully launched i have a domain so i can launch this in a new window and there we go so now my my dockerized application is running i get the message the timestamp and the timestamp updates i don't even have to specify 8080 and the docker managed the golang environment appropriately as well so this ran successfully but we're not done yet we have to go back and make sure that we have deployed removed our deployed terminated our deployed application because we do not want to just forget about it and leave it there and be charged so let's go back to elastic beanstalk and go under applications so the l golang 25 it's here with the associated environment and I can click on this. I demonstrated it. I did everything that I wanted to, to do with it. I'm going to click on actions and I am going to delete my applications. It gives me the for sure prompt. And I can cut paste that in. And now it will initiate the deletion. You see, I have recent environments here. It's interesting to note your environments will not be first of all they won't let you explicitly remove them they will be removed with following the removal of the application and it is not instantaneous so it may take a number of hours for those to be deleted but it's also good practice i think to go back look at your ec2 instances and make sure that those are being terminated as well so i clicked in the ec2 let's bring up the instances and if you recall I have a new instance here with the 25 with the environment associated with that. So this is the T3 micro, not the Ubuntu instance I started here that is still running, but I have the T3 micro here and that's being shut down and that will also be terminated. It wouldn't be best practice just to terminate that without the application. The applications, this is managed services. So it's going to be as it created it for me automatically by terminating the application will also be deleting it for me but doesn't hurt to double check you want to make sure that you are not unnecessarily using your resources so let's do one more check we go back to Lysa Beanstalk and make sure that it's being wound down appropriately And we can take a look at the environment as well. So it defaults environments, but again, let's, the starting point is the application. So I have application zero. So this looks really good. I not only demonstrated everything I wanted to do, but I demonstrated good housekeeping, right? So I'm not going to be charged in and ordinarily. And I have my environments here. I can look at my environment. The environment is still there. And, and as you see here, I cannot uh terminate the environment it could maybe start from the scratch and terminate before the application but this will be if you check following in a day this should be deleted as well and then i can go back to my ec2 instances if you recall i started the ec2 instance to do my build of the docker environment and i still have the dockerized file running in that instance as well so i don't want to leave that up and running and I'm not only going to, going to shut it down because that ran in as a de detached process, but I'm also going to terminate that instance because I took all my software 
from my GitHub and my other resources. So I don't need this particular instance. I just wanted to bring it up so we can start from ground, ground zero. So I'm going to terminate that instance as well. And so now everything that I've touched is now being removed. I did the appropriate housekeeping and I'm all set. So thanks for listening. Hope this helps. I'm going to follow this video with the associated GitHub and any other notes if I have any other issues that arise with working with deployment to the uh, Elastic Beanstalk. So hope this helps and uh, good luck with it. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon. All right, bye.